So Joe Biden had an interview with a local Fox affiliate in Wisconsin recently, and he used the opportunity to trash Bernie Sanders and the left. Let's take a listen. I beat the socialists. That's how I got elected. That's how I got the nomination. Do I look like a socialist? Look at my career, my whole career. I am not a socialist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Points for honesty. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah if, you, if you look at his career, first of all, I'm not sure that that's uh, something yeah. that you would really want to be proud of, standing in the way of progress for working class people, doing the bidding of the credit card industry, shipping jobs overseas, backing the Iraq war, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. However, just from a purely political standpoint, David Sirota wrote about this. We can throw that tear sheet up on the screen. If Joe Biden loses, the reason will be because of depressed turnout among the progressive base, okay? That is the major glaring problem for him is this massive enthusiasm gap. And so just as a matter of like, I want to beat Donald Trump, continually going out and trashing the left of the party and like de-energizing them and filling them with apathy and contempt for you, Probably not a great strategy. Yeah, but his theory is, I don't really care about those people. Most of them will probably turn out to vote anyway. And the people I need are these white suburbanite moderates who voted for Trump last time around or didn't vote for Hillary Clinton or nor kind of culturally conservative but very fiscally conservative. So I think, I mean, from that perspective, I'm not saying it's correct. I think he absolutely could, war could, yeah. could lose. Um, and if he does lose, it'll be because of the reasons that, you know, depressed Hispanic turnout, younger people, et cetera. But if he wins, it's a good strategy, right? Right? Because well, to him, they are the politically tenuous ones. He's like, these are the people getting me all this all this baggage coming from the Trump campaign. Yeah. I got my white suburbanites. They hate the progressive left. I'd rather have them and realign the party towards them. So from that perspective, it makes sense. Well, it does accept. I yeah. mean, this is the theory that Democrats have been running on for decades. Oh, yeah. Right. Look, this is the, this so is the political project of decades and decades and decades, starting with Bill Clinton and this idea of counter scheduling. Right. In their endless quest for the white moderate, the moderate women. Republican, what they do over and over again is they say F you to the left to prove how reasonable and rational they are, um, uh, you know, to these white suburban moderate Republicans. How has that worked for them? Joe Biden is winning fewer Republicans this time around than even Hillary Clinton won last time around. He's getting something like 5% of self-described Republicans, which is equivalent to the 4% of self-described Democrats that Donald Trump is winning. So the strategy of like, we're going to win over Republicans, it's failed. It hasn't worked, bottom line. Where he is weak and vulnerable is this lack of enthusiasm, ultimately. So he, they, will never, they will never understand that. They will never admit that. They will continue running the same playbook, even though so, yeah, there are enough white suburbanites who are, like, fed up with Trump. Those people are going to vote for Joe Biden anyway. He doesn't have to say anything to them. He doesn't have to signal to them. They would vote for, like, a mop sitting in the corner in order to get rid of Donald Trump. It's true, no, right? I, I mean, I, they will I, tell you that. Right. They'll put on their bumper sticker that says, any sane adult 2020, right? Like, that's the way they feel about politics. Yeah. The people they have to motivate are the ones, the, the young people, the working class Latinos, who are either de-energized, not sure they're going to vote, or, in the Latinos' case, some of them drifting over to Trump's side. And when you make comments like this, it is not helpful. At the same time, there's a piece in Politico that is interesting about how progressive groups are trying not to let Joe Biden's administration be Obama 2.0. And basically the idea is last time around, they're kind of caught off guard by Obama because they thought he was like their guy, you know? So they weren't really ready. And the progressive left was not as organized at that point to be able to pressure him. And over the years of the Obama administration, as they come, came to realize like, oh, this guy's trying to do the bidding of Wall Street and like get all these Wall Streeters in his administration, they got more organized and they put more pressure on as the years went by. So this piece is about how they're trying to be involved in the transition team to try to impact the direction of the Biden administration. It's, it's laudable. I'm glad they're more organized. Do I think it's going to work? Look, obviously yeah, look, not. <laughs> the ch the co-chair is the Wall Street guy, Jeff Seans. Covered him here, right? Like, Yeah. That's He's still taking advice know. from Larry Summers. Okay. Uh, right? And Ted Kaufman, who even in this piece, they're like, oh, but he's got Ted Kaufman as mm. his longtime advisor, and he's actually very progressive. He's the guy that went to the Wall Street Journal and was like, oh, we're not going to be able to do that much because the cupboard the will deficit. be bare because of the deficit. Exactly. So that's like the progressive that we're counting on here. I do think it's interesting, though. There will be a lot more dissent on the left from the jump with the Joe Biden administration than there was under Owen Obama. I, I do think that there will be a different
different dynamic there just in terms of the uh, vocal dissent coming from the left in this administration, or at least that's my hope. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I do think it's largely a failed effort. Biden did win. You can see what he thinks of you right there. So sorry. There you go. <laughs> he, he said it all. Tomorrow on Rising, Washington Post economics reporter Jeffrey Stein is going to join us to tell us the latest on the stimulus and economic news. Also, Professor Richard Wolf is going to join us to talk about his new book called The Sickness is in the System. And we will have plenty more, of course, for you. That's right. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.